Do we want to start on? Do you want to talk about it? You're with the Windows? Yeah, let's talk about Windows. Okay. Um, you want me to talk about it? <coughs> sure. So, uh, for those of you who actively participate in the, um, the GitHub repos, you may or may not have noticed that uh, my team has had a little bit less activity recently. And the reason for that is that we've been actually focusing the majority of our time helping Windows partner teams port their uh, Windows PowerShell modules to work on PowerShell Core 6. Um, I don't have any kind of like dates or commitments. Um, this is an ongoing process. Um, things are happening. I'm going to show a demo of something. Um, but other than that, um, one other impact because of this work uh, and prioritization for my team is that the PowerShell 6.1 release will probably be moved out a month. So that means that originally we're targeting towards the um, end of June, early July. It'll probably be end of July, early June, or early um, August, we'll get that next month, um, when that will actually get released. <coughs> so the good news there is that, you know, for the community, if you guys have other uh, pull requests you want to get into the 6.1 release, then you still have time to do that. Um, otherwise, uh, we can... Your sharing's frozen. Oh, great. Uh, well, now we're awesome. fixing some technical problem here. <coughs> But Skype is a perfect it's piece of software. <laughs> you joined the thing. Yeah. Or I can now. Um, changed. Only uh, take over presentation <clears throat> anyways. To show my demo. Wow. We're now we're giant. Okay. Yeah. Take over. And then uh, you can see if you can fix your thing. <clears throat> All right. Uh, my desktop should be showing up shortly. Yep. All right. Um, let me maybe make the font a little bit bigger. Let's make it twenty font. Uh, great. Let's make this. Make this full screen. All right. So what you're seeing here is um, I do have a a newer build of uh, six one newer than preview two because I needed uh, .NET Core two one RC one to get this to work. Uh, so that should be part of the preview three that will probably come out, probably not in May, probably in June. Um, probably because, again, we're, we've been focusing our efforts internally on getting some of the Windows PowerShell stuff working on PowerShell Core 6. Um, I'm leveraging uh, Mark Krause's module because uh, I'm, I haven't got the pull request yet into the Windows PowerShell compatibility pack module um, to pull in the Windows, the .NET Windows compatibility pack assemblies. So that's, um, so this, um, requirement here won't be there in the future, but for demo purposes, it's fine. <coughs> so basically, you kind of see I'm running PowerShell Core 6 here. What I'm going to do is going to go into, uh, where did I build this stuff? Check. So I'm going to import the Active Directory module. And unless I forgot to do something, it should just work. Hey, look at that. No errors. And uh, I'm not an expert of this module, and I'm actually going to wonder this will show some of our CorpNet stuff. Uh, so let's just, you can kind of see it working, but I'm going to clear the screen because we're recording this anyway. I don't, know. I don't think there's anything that we can't share, but um, let me get AD user on Joey. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh, oh, you're not an, I'm an anti-dev, damn it. I mean, darn it. All right, I'll, I'll show myself. I don't think there's anything here that uh, is sensitive. Um, yeah, so anyway, you can kind of see, uh, I can also do like my computer. Oops, not user, sorry. But the point of this is it shows, hey, guess what? Um, I threw some basic testing anyways. Uh, maybe I have to rename my computers and stuff like that now, but <laughs> uh, the Active Directory module, which is something we know the uh, customers wanted, wasn't working on Pasha Core 6, so now I have a private build. Uh, working on PowerShell Core 6. Um, I can't say when this will actually show up publicly so that you guys can try it out. But uh, this is still a work in progress. There's still some known issues that I'm working through. Uh, but this is something that we're going to work with the AD team to get checked into Windows. So ideally, in a future version of Windows, you um, hopefully one of the insiders that will come out, um, you guys can actually try this yourselves and actually start using AD uh, module within PowerShell Core 6. And yes, we're working through a lot of other modules that get shipped with Windows, um, and some of them will work and some of them won't work. We have a kind of like a tight timeline that we're working with here, so <clears throat> I'm not saying that everything will work, but um, more will work than what did before, for sure. Yeah, we are unfortunately have to be very particular about not uh, 
you know, over promising here. I think we're, we're we want to make sure that we're not sounding like we're, we're fixing the whole world or boiling the ocean. But at the same time, you know, we're, we're taking what you guys are telling us very seriously. Um, I think it's a clear front runner that Active Directory has been called out as, as a module that's critical for uh, on PowerShell Core. And, you know, we'll, we'll start to follow up uh, <clears throat> on some of the things outside of Windows as well over the course of the next few months. Right, right now we have some specific internal dates that we want to make sure we're meeting um, that, that make Windows kind of the priority at the moment. But, uh, you know, we're definitely looking at the uh, Azure AD stuff. We're, we're talking to teams within Office. Um, we're obviously making progress in Azure PowerShell where, um, you know, they've got the net core modules out in the gallery uh, that support the full full uh, uh, spectrum of Azure PowerShell commandlets. So, you know, we're making progress on all fronts here, and, and it's it's nice to see people within Microsoft as well um, kind of understanding uh, what PowerShell Core is, why we're doing it, and then reaching out to us to, to kind of be part of that. So, um, yeah. So several comments and questions about uh, getting the AD module on a gallery as well as being open source. So that's certainly something I would like, but that's not a decision I get to make. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll have those discussions with the AD team. It obviously... Being open source means that there's work incurred on their part to uh, maintain it. You don't want to just throw a code over the wall there. Um, as far as providing PS, uh, the, the compat pack inside PS Core 6, uh, I think what we want to do is actually just have the Windows Project compat pack be a transitional technology because in the long term, and I don't know when long term will happen, um, it should just work with all the Windows Project models that get shipped. So it shouldn't be needed. Um, you might still need it for some of the uh, additional assemblies that don't show up in .NET Core, but, you know, we can figure that out. Uh, so I don't think there's any plan right now to rule it in. Oh, if you're talking about rolling more, uh, more across this module, yes, so uh, I am working on a PR to roll in basically the .NET Windows Compat Pack assemblies into the Windows PowerShell Compat Pack module. Uh, so Mark's module will not be needed after that. Um, or if Mark wants to do it, then feel free to submit that PR yourself. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that either, but uh, I know you're working on a few other things, so I, I was going to take care of that probably tomorrow or over the weekend or something like that. So, Yeah, and so for those of you um, that aren't familiar, uh, these are basically um, – Mark's module uh, is one that, that goes ahead and, – and correct me if I'm wrong here, Mark, but – uh, basically adds back the Windows compatibility pack for .NET Core, um, which is the, the sort of set of assemblies for, for Windows-specific uh, APIs that have been, that are now supported in .NET Core, uh, but were not, uh, will never, or likely never be supported on non-Windows platforms. So um, they, they just announced as well, uh, .NET, that they're going to be supporting WinForms and WPF in 3.0. Um, there will likely be released, I think in the, the blog comments there, you can see Rich Lander talking about how that will be released as a, a sort of pack as well, um, <clears throat> like these have, and, and that's going to play a significant role, I think, in our backwards compatibility strategy, uh, you know, post post 3.0 release as well, because a lot of those those types are, are needed in, in uh, PowerShell Core for certain modules. Um, a lot of the work that we're doing now is to sort of understand you know, exactly what, what the extent of that is and, and how the sort of stuff can, can help there. Um, the Windows PowerShell compatibility pack, the, the one we've got here, does a little bit more than just uh, add those those assemblies. And I, I believe, I'm, I'm sorry, Mark, but I'm, I'm sure you have more stuff in, in your module as well. No, that's all um, It's just the assemblies? Yeah, that was the intent. Got it. Um, but in this one, we're, we also want to support uh, a demo that, that Bruce showed at, at the last two PowerShell conferences. Um, of uh, basically a local implicit remoting uh, loopback to Windows PowerShell so that you can actually import a module um, from Windows PowerShell using implicit remoting um, and then uh, run it as if it was a uh, uh, part of PowerShell Core. And so um, I think the pull request for that actually got merged yesterday. Um, so I, we don't have a release, or do we have an ETA on a, on a release of the Windows PowerShell compatibility? Uh, no, so I just submitted a PR to basically get rid of uh, the, the need for my Windows PS module path module. Uh, well, hopefully that gets merged in today. It's pretty simple. And then we'll get the uh, PR sure, sure. for the Windows for the .NET Windows compatibility pack assemblies, and then after that we can get a, a release up on the gallery. Um, if you want to just play with the R module capability that Bruce demoed, I mean, that's in the repo already, so... 
and, and it's just a it's a script module, so you can just download the PSM one and PSD one and just use it today. And again, open up issues. Uh, it'll probably be in preview for a bit until we get sufficient um, feedback that we can actually change it to a 1.0. So unfortunately, I'm trying to share here, but uh, my share keeps crashing on me when it gets connected. <clears throat> just a quick question. I, um, <clears throat> I just joined a slightly late, and it's kind of confusing the various compatibility packs and strategies. Yes. <laughs> but from, what I understand, from what I understand, you're saying there's a PS Core compatibility pack that contain libraries that ultimately will not be required for that compatibility pack because those will be ultimately rolled into the PowerShell package itself. And those are libraries that are standard across platforms. Then you're talking about a Windows compatibility pack, which is the one I'm more familiar with, which if I understand correctly contains Windows specific libraries that most likely wouldn't be something we would include by default because they include libraries specific to Windows that wouldn't necessarily be um, included or, or relevant to, to cross plat Do I have that correct? Um, not entirely. So uh, this, yeah, the naming is pretty horrible. So the Windows PowerShell compatibility pack includes the .NET Windows compatibility pack assembly. So that's going to be part of a single module. Um, so, but that module has not only basically adding additional API surface from a .NET perspective, but also um, as the ability to add the Windows PowerShell module path to PowerShell Core 6. You can find the other modules. And also um, the work that Bruce did uh, with Jeffrey Snover to do the R module, which is you can use implicit remoting so that for modules that may never get ported to PowerShell Core 6, maybe the author abandoned it, um, or maybe it's written in some way managed C++, which is not going to get supported in um, .NET Core, then um, you can still use R module to do implicit remoting, so you can still um, basically make it feel like you're using it locally in PowerShell Core 6, even though we're under the covers doing remoting to uh, handle the serialization, deserialization of those objects. Uh, don't I think sort of, you, but, but yeah. sort of, I mean, at a high level, I think, um, the one that Mark did with the assemblies is being rolled into yes, uh, that, the, the larger one. And the, and the larger one, the Windows PowerShell. Oh, if that's the actually, question, yes. It's essentially intended to be uh, uh, the Uber sort of bucket of stop gaps and or hacks that allow us to be more compatible with the, the, the backward technology or the, 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 the Windows PowerShell modules. So um, the, the intent is to put everything into that module that helps you be more compatible with Windows PowerShell and then to ship that module in the gallery. So um, yeah, sorry, I misunderstood the question. Yeah, Mark, so Mark uh, module PS Core Windows pack, I think is what you called it. Um, that uh, kind of got ahead of us because we weren't ready to do that yet, um, and that capability we rolled into the Windows PowerShell compatibility pack. But I will, I will be sure to publish notes and tweet about them and for links to all this stuff because we do know that it is a little bit undiscoverable right now, and I'd expect to also have a blog out um, when we do get the the first Windows PowerShell compat pack published to the gallery. So. Yes. Um, yeah, module, and, and hopefully included in that, there, there will be strategy as well as far as like what's staying indefinitely, what's going to be eventually phased into the core product. And it, because from a, from an enterprise perspective, I need to form a strategy on you know, and communicate that strategy as far as how we're going to support core, um, what things we'll need to be bringing in versus things that, you know, are going to remain uh, out of the core product. So, you know, that, that type of thing would be also appreciated. So, so thank you for that. Yeah, and, and, and there's definitely an intention on our side as we sort of go through this exercise of the compatibility, uh, you know, bring, bring these, some of these modules up to native compatibility so that they don't need this pack. Um, our, our intention here is to have, um, you know, some kind of messaging around these are the modules we support and or, uh, you know, these are... Um, I'm blanking here. I, I definitely had a second thing, um, but uh, I'm sorry. But but basically, we you know oh oh we want to we want a whitelist as well. I yeah. think we we've been talking about hey you know can we make PowerShell natively for the things that we officially support and that we know are compatible and work great? Um, can we just whitelist those things and bring them into the module path um, when they're available without you having to go do extra work and downloading extra module or we're, we're working through all that right now, and we'll have more to share and do in the open and that sort of thing. But but at the moment, it's sort of all hands on deck of just like uh, uh, getting these assemblies into a thing that's easily consumable by PowerShell across the board, and then uh, making the modules natively work. So if that makes sense. But yes, I better messaging. I definitely hear you loud and clear. Thanks. 
Cool. Um, I'm just going up. I want to make sure. Uh, okay, don't maintain eye contact with the webcam. <laughs> yes. Oh, by the way, I, I don't think we can zoom the cam. <clears throat> zoom the conference Although, cam. Perhaps now. we can sit closer next time. Uh, yes, corporate strategy asking how PS Core will fit in the infrastructure. Cool. Uh, totally. <laughs> plus 12 in remoting. Awesome. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> that covers everything from the compat side. Um, I, I feel like we should also just sort of switching gears here, uh, give a brief shout out to everybody that was at the conferences. Um, we, we missed uh, last month's call because of the, uh, the PowerShell conference in Europe. Um, we were also attending the PowerShell Summit North America, and uh, I know many of you were there. Uh, we had a really good time talking about PowerShell and, and seeing all the exciting stuff that you guys are doing out in the wild with PowerShell. Um, and if you have not attended one of those conferences, definitely check out uh, all the YouTube videos online. Even if you did attend, I'll be checking out videos I missed in Europe. Um, but there's there's tons of YouTube videos from both of the conferences, um, and we, we talk about uh, you know lots and lots of starting strategy and future that sort of thing. So. Um, definitely check that out and, and uh, join us next year. Um, yeah, uh, I think Tyler, we, we also, uh, part, part of the sort of effort that we've been driving here to, to, to grow PowerShell core adoption has been around the, uh, the developer story. And I know um, many folks on the call are very passionate about uh, our ability to sort of publish modules that uh, don't duplicate binaries, for instance, or uh, you know that, that you can use native .NET CLI tooling, uh, for instance, to, to sort of create your C sharp based modules and to, to pull in um, NuGet uh, package assemblies. That sort of thing. So um, Tyler's going to show something that he briefly worked on. This way? Yeah, this way. Yep, we could. Also, you're on the Skype already. Oh yeah, I, I guess I could just do that. That's fine. Uh, so this is, this is basically. Uh, a template that allows you to create a new .NET CLI project that is a PowerShell module. Um, this is sort of a first pass at this, but I think it's definitely the direction that we want to go for binary modules. Um, and you know, there's there's more stuff I think we'd like to do in PowerShell Get and in the gallery to sort of enable uh, uh, you know better, more simplicity in this scenario. But um, this is definitely a great first step. So uh, yeah, I think as soon as this clicks in, you can take it away. All right. <clears throat> Some of you who are all about Twitter have seen this already, so I'm sorry. But for those of you that aren't, I'll show you uh, what we've done here. So for those of you that are familiar with the, the .NET SDK, it's a tool that you would normally use something like this, .NET Build or .NET Publish or something. Um, they have this thing called .NET New. And uh, if I do dash L here, and uh, maybe I need to drop the font here. Mess with this. There we go. That's a little bit better. Um, there's a bunch of these templates here that we can we can work off of. Um, and I could do like .NET new, uh, .NET new class lib, and and that's gonna like. <clears throat> basically give me a template to work off of. So I made one for, for a PowerShell standard uh, PowerShell module. And uh, let's go ahead and just give it a try. So the first things first is I need to install the template itself. And .NET New has this really awesome way to install something where you do .NET New dash I, and then you type in the template name, <clears throat> which is a bit long. Uh, I kind of wish. It changed a bit, but uh, standard dot module dot template. <clears throat> and so that's going to install the template itself. And then if I do, yeah, yeah. And then we see here. There's a new one, PowerShell standard module, shortening PowerShell module, <clears throat> et cetera. Uh, and so what I could do is make a new directory, all right, awesome, module. Getting into that, and then do 
.NET new PS module, um, <clears throat> and that's going to get the template, do a .NET restore for you, and if I look at this directory, I have a, a CSproj, which honors the name of the folder that I was in. Um, this test sample commandlet CS, um, it's just a boilerplate <clears throat> template. Uh, actually, here, just open it up real quick. <clears throat> wow, microscopic. Anyway, yeah. You see, it's it's just like a regular old temp, uh, commandlet template, test sample commandlet, and it does some stuff. Uh, and then the CS prod, you'll notice, references the latest partial standard uh, version. And one of the cool things that I managed to do within the .NET new templating is specify uh, different arguments. So if I were to do uh, dash H here for help, we can actually get more information about that particular template here. You see I added like a PowerShell standard version for those that want to target standard 3.0 um, and then this like no restore if you didn't want to actually run .NET restore. Um, but anyway, this is this was just like something I, I threw together relatively quickly just to see um, what it could do and uh, I think this is a, a really good way that we can make binary module development like that much easier and more of a end-to-end -end scenario but uh, but yeah it's I think it's pretty cool um, yeah this is awesome and then uh, you know one the, the sort of other end of this uh, pipeline that I think we're looking at is is where you finally do the build and the publish and then uh, you essentially get this folder uh, full of stuff you know you, you do a publish you're gonna get all the .NET core stuff uh, that we already have in PowerShell, and if you do uh, build, you're only going to get your specific uh, libraries or DLLs that, that you're building um, within your project. Um, so we sort of need to solve this middle ground pro problem where you do the publish, um, but that when you put it in the gallery, we don't sort of duplicate the publishing of all the modules that we already have in PS Home. So, um, you know, for instance, it's not, not just like system.core, for instance, uh, where we've got that thing in the, in the .NET Core uh, uh, CLR that, that's part of PowerShell, but also uh, you know, system.management.automation, for instance, if you're depending on PowerShell standard, um, you definitely don't want to distribute that as part of your module, um, or newtonsoft.json even, uh, an assembly that's not part of uh, .NET Core uh, necessarily, but that you may be depending on as an external NuGet library. So, um, you know, that, that sort of middle ground, I know it's been, been um, Joel Bennett's sort of, uh, uh, you know, big, big push from that NuGet uh, option that he had a very long time ago, but uh, ooh, GitHub issue from a very long time ago around uh, the NuGet tooling, but, you know, also enlightening, like, install module to understand runtime IDs so that we can, you know, not double ship assemblies down to every single client and have them. Uh, have to switch on them at runtime. Those those sorts of things, um, you know, we, we really want to solve end to end and have a, a scenario doc that hopefully makes Bill happy up here that we can just, uh, uh, you know, say this is the the way to make a universal PowerShell module uh, across CLRs, across OSs, across uh, you know versions. So uh, we will get there, um, but you know, just just uh, try to be patient with us as we as we get there. Cool. Let me just add um, as what Tyler's showing on the screen is uh, the template itself is checked in a partial standard repo. Yeah. So if you have suggestions on how to uh, improve that template, uh, please submit PRs there or just open up issues. Uh, for example, I think that we should probably have some pester tests. Yeah, as part of the generated thing. Oh, uh -huh. or maybe you already have issues on that. Yeah, I opened a couple. We should probably also have the module manifest created um, and things like that. So. Cool. Um, I kind of want to jump to questions here. I did see uh, very far up sort of an, uh, an out of left field question about ML, um, and it was not around um, not around the ML work that we did or, or that we were investigating uh, a few months back. Uh, we, we were looking at using ML actually as a way to drive IntelliSense and command completions. Um, but this is actually asking, hey, um, 
you know, what do you think of using PowerShell Core f as an ML uh, sort of d tool or toolkit, right? Is that, is that the question? Um, I think uh, that would be awesome. Um, I would love it if somebody built on top of these .NET Core libraries for, for doing ML and, and wrote some PowerShell commandlets. Um, I, I don't know that we have it um, in our list of work items at all, no. um, but you know, certainly Azure services are supposed to have, uh, uh, you know, modules that go with them. Um, so any any of the Azure machine learning stuff uh, that's out there as a service should should have some PowerShell commandlets. Um, if they don't, I would expect them to soon, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I, I would I would encourage anybody out think, there that's doing. I think those commandlets be more like for managing your ML instance. Yeah. And I, I thought that the question is more like uh, using PowerShell script as like the language. Right, right. You actually ML, do the data parsing your and, business logic, yep. um, which is interesting, but not something I think we've met in our charter right now. But if someone has a proposal, uh, just throw up an RFC, and we can uh, discuss that. Um, Christoph uh, was asking about uh, .NET new templates into Plaster. I think that yeah, that just we should just do that. Um, I don't think there's any any real controversy there. Um, Going back up, sorry. I'm still looking forward to seeing those F sharp PowerShell modules. <laughs> um, uh, okay, the module builder docs. I don't, I don't know about those those docs, uh, Joel. I would love to see. Um, a link to the module builder stuff. Oh, you've got it in here. Perfect. Yeah, I definitely have to check this out. Um, excellent. Yeah, this seems sweet. Um, cool. All right, does anybody have any other questions? I don't know that we have a whole, whole ton of stuff for you guys today. Um, What are your burning uh, uh, problems? Is is um, are you guys working with VMware for PowerCLI Core? Yes, I do uh, uh, talk to to Jake Robinson over at VMware uh, every few weeks, um, as well as some of the devs on their team. Uh, they are uh, great guys. They're they're awesome, and and we really love working with them. And, and I love that PowerCLI Core is is uh, doing as well as it is. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, yes. This is more talk about CS projects. Um, so are you guys, uh, like, I'm, I'm kind of curious about PowerShell course scenarios out in the wild. Um, oh, comments on the regressions <laughs> in Windows 1803, um, specifically around the ISC or, or are there or more something else, that yeah. I'm not aware? Because I am aware of the IntelliSense one in ISC. That one's been fixed and, and should be pushed out in a uh, future servicing patch. Uh, it'll be pushed out this month. Um, Windows fixes to be addressed in PowerShell Core. Could you expand on that, Maxima? And also, Bergmeister, if you just want to jump in on the voice here and, and uh, tell us what you mean by these. Uh, PowerShell get support for NuGet v3 is actually in progress, um, so you should be seeing that uh, at some point in the future. I don't know that we have any ETAs or anything to announce, but I know that they're definitely working on that. Um, um, just wondering why it could break if you didn't change it anymore. I have no idea, actually. What would Wait, the, que the question is about um, why are we making? Oh, you mean the ISC? Yeah, yes. like how did the how did no, the no, ISC? So, uh, uh, I can give some context on the ISC. Um, so basically, we didn't make any changes except for one pseudo big change, which is we had an accessibility problem. So in the later Windows 10s, they had a new uh, text-to-speech screen reader thing, and it didn't work well with IC. Um, so we had to make a change there to make it work. And as part of that change, unfortunately, IntelliSense broke, and we didn't catch it until too late in the um, time frame for the, I forget what the, at least if it's for us, we call it RS4. Yeah. 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 So, um, so the fix is already made in the uh, next version of Windows. So if you're an insiders uh, on one of the faster ranges, you probably should already have it. Uh, if something newer than the RS4, whatever that was called again. 1803. <laughs> yeah, 1803. Um, but uh, the, the fix has been approved, and it was already checked in for servicing. Uh, and I think, believe it's currently 
target for the last week of May is when they're going to release it. So unfortunately, uh, it's going to be a bit, but you know, I'll use VS Code. Um, and that, <laughs> that doesn't have that problem. I mean, the, the, I think the Uber point, Christoph, is that there are still um, there are Uber, you know, changes that get made to, to core Windows components that require us to change things. Um, actually, my, my hunch was that it was related to some DPI change, but uh, yeah. the accessibility it thing is just as likely. Um, but you know, there's there's places where. Somebody tapped the mute button. Uh, cool. How much did we lose? I don't think we lost too much. Uh, so Maximo is saying, I'm in about Windows PowerShell oh. list of issues to be addressed in PowerShell Core. So going the other direction. Yes. So 30 second loss. Uh, I think the last part of what Joe is saying is that in general, we're not making uh, big changes in the Windows code base, whether it's IC or Windows PowerShell. However, if there are some compliance or uh, regulatory type stuff like accessibility, then we have to make those changes. And in this case, we have to make that change in IC, which causes break. But, um, and we fix it. Unfortunately, we fix it late. But. Um, in terms of Maximo's question, yes, um, I still have a plan to triage the ones that we have marked for port Windows PowerShell on GitHub. Uh, because those labels are still there, it means that work hasn't been done yet. Again, from a priority perspective, right now we're just focusing on doing the porting work, helping partner teams in Windows get their stuff working on PowerShell Core 6. I think after that, then uh, there may be some bandwidth available on my team to kind of look at some of those and get those into Windows PowerShell, but not all of them will make it there. So uh, again, the um, I think I even had the word consider. So I think it's consider Windows PowerShell port, something like that. So we'll look at those, but I can't promise that all will make it. Like if, if it's something that when we, because the Windows code base, the Windows PowerShell code base and the PowerShell core code base has diverged quite a bit now. If it's a risky change, uh, we're probably going to err on the side of not taking it because I don't want to cause other regressions like we've seen in ISC, right? Um, but if it's something that seems to be pretty self-contained, uh, relatively simple, then we'll do it. But again, a lot of the work isn't actually doing the porting work. It's actually an investigation work to see the risk of the, the port. Yeah, we, you know, given the amount of scripts that are out there in being used against Windows PowerShell, there's a, a much greater surface area that we can potentially regress when we make those changes um, than, than we have right now in PowerShell Core where we can sort of a little more nimble. Um, obviously, that'll that'll change over time, but yeah, we're still we're still being a little bit flexible when it comes to PowerShell Core's development, and, and we just can't do the same with the, the bits that ship in Windows already. Um, any conclusions on the possible deprecation of 3.4 support for editor services? Um, yeah, so this is um, this is one of those things that, that Rob and Tyler, I think, have been following a lot more closely. Uh, than I have. I, I know I have pretty strong feelings uh, about about dropping three and four. I, I think that um, you know any way for these guys to make more progress uh, on you know performance and the, the debug adapter and being more stable and all that. Um, I also think that that version six, especially with the import R module work that that uh, Bruce and Jeffrey did with the the compat pack. Um, six actually turns out to be a pretty great tool, development tool for three and four. Um, so, you know, if you've got the shape of the module available, um, you know, even if you're not, uh, you know, necessarily able, to, you you can debug as long as you're not touching, uh, you know, ne needing live objects in your, your mobile session um, with six. Uh, you know, it, it, it's going to give you all the IntelliSense and and the static analysis and that sort of thing. We also want to get those script analyzer rules done um, that allow you to sort of analyze PSM ones um, and figure out whether or not uh, they've got uh, commandlets or types that are outside of the, uh, the the API surface area of of whatever your target of version CLRs and OSs are. Um, and so that's that's going to be another bridge um, that sort of helps you not necessarily need to have a V3 or a V4 run space in order to target V3 and V4 and say, um, you know, hey, we want these commandlets, uh, you know, you're, you're outside the shape of, of what we know in this static catalog um, as part of PowerShell V3 or V4. So um, there's a lot of that sort of stuff that we can do. 
to, to, to make it easier. But I think at the end of the day, it's just um, the bulk of people out there are, are moving to five, one, and six, and, and you know we, we shouldn't shouldn't slow down progress too much um, to support these older things where I think a lot of folks are still using ISC anyway. Um, yeah, yeah, let, me just add, yeah. let me just add one thing. Like deprecation doesn't mean removal. So it doesn't mean like suddenly we're going to delete all the cases from the internet where you can make it work with B3 and 4, right? Um, I think the, the plan that we had and that we talked about internally, and I think we kind of presented in the issue that Rob opened, is that what we want to do is say, hey, we're going to formally make a statement and say, hey, going forward, to make the team and the community more uh, agile going forward, we can just focus on 5, 1, and higher. Um, and then for three and four, we're going to have a version like the, the previous or the current minor version or major version will support three and four, and we'll support that for some definite amount of time. So any major uh, issues we'll address, but all the new feature work is going to go towards the new major version plus one, um, and that will simplify our code. Um, it makes us able to address community issues much more faster, at least for the newer platforms. Um, so that's kind of direction we want to head. Yeah, and if you want to chime in on on that discussion. Uh, I put the, the link to the issue in the chat. Feel free to, to chime in or give your thoughts. About 30 seconds. All right, Mark. All right. Uh, so uh, <laughs> let's talk about how good you for a second. So I think there's two things here. Um, you know, at Build, again, .NET Core team announced .NET Core 3 will have WinForms and WPF support, although that's only on the Windows side, so it's not cross-platform. Um, so that means that when that happens, we could just have Outgrid View as it currently exists in Windows PowerShell, uh, available in PowerShell Core 6X, whatever version that ends up being, uh, on Windows. Uh, I think on non-Windows, uh, as a cross-platform solution, the one thing that we've been talking about is really maybe embracing uh, like web GUIs. Uh, some of the stuff like you know Adam has done with uh, the dashboard, but maybe lighter, <laughs> uh, is something we could potentially investigate into. Um, and you know, I talked a bit about console GUIs in the past, and maybe we'll revisit that again, but. We still need a cross-platform story, but I think Outgrid View as it exists uh, seems like it might come back when um, .NET Core 3.0 supports that stuff. Yeah, and one of the things that um, was not totally clear to me uh, in, in with Outgrid View, and I actually I, I wasn't aware of this scenario until uh, Rob Soul brought it up to me at PowerShell yeah. Conference EU, um, is that people use it in the middle of pipelines mm -hmm. um, as a selection tool. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, so, and I, I, I didn't actually I didn't know about that until just now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so you, you essentially, you know, you, you get some stuff, you package yeah, out grid view, you, you do a picker, and then, you know, you send the, uh, the, the yeah. filtered output through the pipeline. So, um, yeah, that's the mid-pipeline. Like, apparently, we've been totally missing the memo on this. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. that's like, it, it kind of crushes the web the web store no, unless you have an IP. No, that, that's uh, what we've been, I mean, uh, some of the discussions I had yeah. Yeah. is that we Which would actually, yeah. Yeah. It go, it's bi-directional, right? right? So it's not yeah. one direction through web. Right, like a pass-through. Yeah, 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 totally. So yeah, we got that in focus now. Sorry for uh, uh, not understanding that until very, very recently. So. Um. There's something. Oh, the file, um, the folder naming. We need to kind of just sign off on the RC that Joey wrote on the naming. And yes, the I think the idea is to have the consistent name across the platform, where we would just have a uh, major version and a major version preview, and those would be two channels that are updated independently of each other. So one one is basically stable and one is um, experimental. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, that RFC was specifically targeting Windows, but you're right in that we need to close the gap on, on Mac and Linux. Um, there's there's kind of some cleanup that we have to do in general, and, and I probably haven't talked to you about this at all, but uh, we, th this whole, like, on, especially on Linux, we, we've got one train, and it's sort of 6.1 is currently uh, the update for, you know, 6.0. Yes. Um, similarly, I think our GitHub releases uh, should probably be marked as pre-release so that people can actually use the API correctly um, in getting latest as a stable thing, and, and the latest pre-release uh, is that little orange banner on GitHub. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a great point you raised, Darwin, that that's, that's good to, to make sure you're doing something very carefully when you're automating. 
Um, you know, you, you just need to do something one time, and you know, you don't want to accidentally wear object incorrectly and then delete a bunch of stuff that, that you need. So yeah, and, and this is Darwin. It's not just that; it's also um, the ROI of automation. You got to know when not to automate, and so some of these little bits are important when it doesn't make sense to automate because you spend more time screwing around with the code than you do the activity. Yes, yes. Classic Joey. executing chart of, of productivity and, and realizing that uh, you know you can be on the left side of that graph. Who's that? Joey, something broke the last time we marked something, marked the release as pre-release. Not good. That's, that's a Travis on my team. We'll talk about it and figure it out. It's not. It's not hugely critical. I'm just, um, you know, I'm just pointing out that there's a, we have a few loose ends there on, uh, you know, upgrade from from stable to preview where where that's happening, uh, yeah. maybe hey. without the user's knowledge. Yeah. Um, no, no, uh, Linux. Oh, sorry, Travis. There's also an issue open on usage of dashes and tildes and how we name preview. I thought we fixed that. I don't know. I just saw the issue open the other. Is uh, a new one? A new issue? Possibly. It might be distro specific. No, there is distro specific, uh, but I thought we already addressed that, but maybe it's, there's some nuance that we didn't address, but we'll look at that. Uh, yes, Joel, we are aware of uh, the work that Miguel did and something we will consider. Or the community could build something as well, that'd be awesome. Yes. Sorry, just catching up. With, um, I need to look at the Miguel's work because I haven't, I haven't actually. He has a console GUI library. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, cool. Does anyone have any other questions? Uh, I should also point out, as I typically do at the end of these calls, the, uh, the SSH work that we're doing as well. Um, the 1803 release shipped OpenSSH as a production-ready feature. Um, we have the SSH client turned on by default, uh, and the SSH server is a feature on demand that you still install optionally, although a bunch of the configuration that you had to do in uh, the Fall Creators update is no longer uh, no longer required. You basically can just start the server, and it will build all of your host keys uh, and, and do everything automatically. Um, so that's awesome. Um, I will tell you right now, Keith, uh, what is the servicing strategy for those who installed via the Windows additional features? Servicing strategy, anything that's uh, installed via Windows additional feature is uh, Windows Update supported. So uh, you get Windows Update servicing, and actually the only way that we are currently supporting the product the, uh, is, is in the one in Windows. So... Um, you know, you can still go to the GitHub repo, get those bits. They are still shipped and licensed as BSD, which is use at your own risk. Uh, you know, that's uh, not something that we formally support. Um, we, we have thought about some ways that we might be able to do a down-level servicing strategy, um, but to be honest with you, there's enough stuff right now that we want to get done in OpenSSH, namely getting upstream with the official project, that uh, there's... It's kind of lower down on our list right now, um, but yeah, if you have the if you have the features on demand one, um, you know you did get sort of upgraded on 1803, um, and if you install the server as a feature on demand, uh, then you you are fully supported. So that's uh, as long as you have whatever Windows support agreement you have, we we support you. Um, the uh, I've seen a few issues on Twitter, and I would love if anybody here has also been having those issues around um, the path. And the fact that uh, I guess for some people their path variable has a trailing backslash on the OpenSSH folder. Um, I don't know why that is, um, but uh, it's that's breaking them somehow. Um, mine has that trailing backslash and it works just fine, so I don't know exactly what's going on. But um, yeah, if anybody has any issues, please feel free to reach out to me to, to make sure they get addressed. Um, Created code to clear the old PWSH paths. Where should it be placed? The gallery. Uh, I guess. I don't, well, I think the question is. I think Darwin's looking to wait so that customers can just get it and get things that cleaned up. Um, yeah. I don't know that we. 
should go touching people's paths. Um, I think w when we do an uninstall, we take the path with it, right? No, but if there's anything in there because you did an install nope. module or some stuff we, or you did an update help, yeah. it doesn't matter. No, it up. no, uninstall cannot touch the, the path. The MSI doesn't uh, support uh, that. There may be something that the customer put in that folder. We can't just blow it away. No, not blow it away. Take it off the path. You get yeah, like five or six PowerShell core paths entries. Yeah, but uh, MSI doesn't consider that a safe operation, so it doesn't do it automatically. Sure, but uh, I'm talking about I have a PowerShell that you could either call as a custom action or just provide as a as a utility script. Yeah, I think I think my recommendation for now, Darwin, is probably just put it on um, the gallery as a script, and then we can have people use that <coughs> for now. Long term, hopefully this won't be a problem because we're finally, I think, solving our path problem for once and for all. Uh, so. Michael had a question here about uh, uh, key pairs and having to shovel them around to each machine. Um, yeah, that's still the story right now. I don't know that we have uh, a better story at the moment or, or that we plan on having a better story. Um, we should have a better story. I don't think there's a plan for it. There's not a plan for a better story, but but I... We should be able to store the keys in a domain. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. That would be awesome in Active Directory land. I, we should, uh, if we should sort of follow up at the end of our Active Directory engagement on the module with people in that team to understand how we might be able to support that. Yeah. Um, but I know we're also talking about and looking at uh, scenarios involving Key Vault, um, scenarios involving uh, uh, Azure VMs uh, and SSH keys. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah or Azure Key Vault. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> idea. Um, <laughs> Well, in this case, it's actually the public key, anyway. So, yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> theoretically, you know, you, theoretically, it's safe. An internal gallery on an SMB share with a, who knows? There's all, you know, you, you could. No, but the problem, the problem with all those solutions, even though they're half jokes, is that you still have to have that target machine grab the key from that location, right? So having it in the domain and the key just being authenticated that way would be so easy because now you don't have to touch all these machines. Um, I, I would say, Michael, if that issue doesn't exist on the open SSH uh, Microsoft repo, I would suggest opening that up so that we don't forget about it when we leave this call. I think that's a good suggestion. SMB v1 shares with all authenticated users. Yes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yes. That will work. <laughs> so I have a script that just go out there. Uh, all right. Um, it looks like you guys are having way too much fun here on brainstorming on that. Yeah. Um, Maximo, we should... Uh, we should talk more about the problems that you're hitting with relation to the Windows 10 OpenSSH. Um, unfortunately, like I said, we, we can't support the one that's on Chocolatey today, given that it's uh, given the way that we service bits and, and uh, that sort of thing. I, I certainly would never say not to use it. I'm sure it works great for a ton of people, but um, it's just not something that we can you know put a, a, an official Microsoft stamp on. Um, but Maybe that won't be true forever. So, um, cool. Awesome. Does anybody have anything else here? We also have Sean <laughs> from the doc side. If you have any questions about that, uh, Rob is here. And of course, Tyler. Jim is online. Tons oh, of Jim's, on, Jim's, Jim's online. Jim's on the phone. Online. Some other people. Cool. Well, we could theoretically get done a little. Well, there we go. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, we. I. I thought we addressed that one up earlier, uh, Maximo. But yeah, we. We are going to do that for sure. Um, looks like the Darwin storing right? SSH keys in Active Directory. Darwin. Oh my gosh. Right. What is this? I'll have to take a look at this. Oh, first. cool. I definitely have to take a look at this. This looks awesome. No, but I think the question, storing it is one thing, but having SSHD automatically retrieve it. Yeah. That I don't, I don't believe that is there. I don't think that happens automatically. It's more auto magical. Yeah, sounds a little bit sketchy. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's um, secure. Uh, if that method's secure. But hey, if you, yeah. if you do build that, you might as well build in uh, group policy for uh, open SSH. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh yeah! Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. That's scary. What's scary is the five billion scripts there are for grepping or munging SSH 
config files all over the planet, and none of them really do in-place edits. They're all for, like, fresh from template slam over top of the old one. Oh, dear. Yeah, and we uh, – I have not totally dropped the ball in the conversation that we had, uh, Darwin, on – on doing that, um, it's still a, a line item for us. We're, we're closing down some bugs in, in SSH first, but um, we definitely do want to have some kind of programmatic way to configure the SSH config, um, and and would like to bring you into that conversation more. So, um, yeah, and it's it's, Anthony it's on the radar. It's just uh, it's a little further out, unfortunately. Yeah, just FYI, Anthony Nocentino mentioned that there's. Already in OpenSSH, there's C code for parsing the file, which might serve as a good template of, you know, being able to do it without, in the in the best possible way, if there is such a thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, or at least to, uh, you know, if that code's not perfect, we should make it perfect and use the same code, kind of thing. So, um, yeah. Uh, there was one uh, asked from Mark here about the missing APIs and types in the PowerShell API docs. Um, is that in 6.0 or in the old MSDN 5.1 stuff, Mark? It's in 6.0. 6.0, okay. Um, do you do you have an issue up on that one right now on, on PowerShell Docs? Well, it's not in PowerShell Docs, so I can't really, unless <laughs> you just want me to open one there. Um, Actually, yeah. could yeah, if you could open one there, that'd be awesome. I know that the Docs are kind of, they're all generated. Um so uh, yeah, I, I know that the content, or does the, does the content actually live in a different repo? Sean, the, the API the, reference documentation. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, do you get to that repo when you hit edit on the the API docs themselves? You get a nice 404 page. Is what you get. You get a what mark? Sorry. You get a 404 page when you hit edit on those docs. Oh seriously? No. That's awesome. Uh, PowerShell API docs, yeah, so this is the, uh, this is like the, the system.management.automation you're talking about. Yeah, and uh, the commands one as well. Yes. Found it here. So this is, if you hit edit here, this 404s. Um, oh, dude, well, this took me to Power. So, oh, it's yes, 404 it's is because it's a private repo. I go, this isn't 404 at all. It took me right there. Uh, except private, you can't see that. Right. So we need, to, um, we need to work on getting that open source. Yeah, that would basically, well, we should either not have the edit link or have it and have it go to a public place. Or, <laughs> um, I mean, I think it is generated, so it's probably like shouldn't be edited, but some aspect of it should, whatever we're generating it from. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, thank you for pointing that out. I was I was definitely not aware, because uh, I'm always logged in, and I never looked up at the private flag. Uh, so, we'll definitely. Uh, yeah, we need to follow up with them and figure out the workflow. If it um, yeah, but we also, uh, I've been working with Sean um, not as much as he would like because I've been blocking <laughs> the heck out of him. But um, we're trying to get all the MSDN documentation and have been for a while that, that you guys pointed out on Twitter a little while ago moved over to um, moved over to PowerShell Docs so that we can have sort of a consolidated table of contents that rationalizes, you know, like, like you have his, like guys have been saying, we want the doc on like building a binary module. Um, that stuff all is like sitting on MSDN, parked over there, stuck. Uh, with the old API documentation, uh, and you know, really, we need to modernize that. You know, get it into Markdown, get it published, and we're we're so 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 close. Um, so we'll we'll have that. Uh, uh, you'll you'll see some of that work starting to happen pretty soon here. I think. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, where's my PowerShell samples? Yeah, we've we've been pushing on that one for a long time. Um, but Microsoft Graph, oh, I didn't realize these guys had. Uh, do you work with anybody or, over in Microsoft Graph? Do, do you guys know any, uh, Mark, who are you talking to on the Graph team? No, it's just during the community calls, I always bring up PowerShell. Like, where's the PowerShell examples? And it's crickets. <laughs> keep, keep fighting the good fight. Um, cool. You have one more? Yeah, I just wanted to give a quick status on... 
on editor services and kind of where Rob and I have been. Steve already mentioned we've got this this module coverage work that we've been working on and we kind of got pulled into that as well. So we're juggling that along with uh, editor services and, and stuff along those lines. Um, so that's why it, if you've realized things have been a little quiet, that's, that's because of that. Um, as far as editor services goes, I've been working mostly on on performance related things, and I'm I'm trudging through the water. It's uh, performance issues are uh, not trivial, I'll say. Um, but I'm working on it. It's getting there, making progress for sure. Uh, so bear with me, and uh, and Rob and yeah yeah. Our aims at the moment are definitely to like improve the architecture, the performance, mm -hmm. support um, the other clients beyond VS Code that have really started to pick up editor services. Um, yeah. yeah, we've got now uh, Adam out and Sublime, Sublime, Vim. Yeah. With yeah, uh, I think uh, Adam maybe even working on getting it into Posh Tools for mm -hmm. VS. Uh, yeah, for tools. Um, yeah, yeah, a bunch, and that's like yeah, I mean that's that's what we want to happen is we do all this work in editor services, and then people who use their favorite text editor can use that with editor services, and not uh, you have to go with what we say, you know. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I don't know, Adam, today that uh, the what Steve just linked to supports PowerShell, um, and I'm I'm not uh, I'm not sure how quickly we're moving along there. That's why I, didn't, I didn't, wasn't sure that we had anything to share because it's it's definitely uh, it's not working as of today, and I don't know that there's any kind of public code showing that it's uh, on the way. So um, I want to find out what the what our sort of rough timeline is, and and you know how. How committed we are to that work and, and having it happen in the, the near term. Yeah, that'd um, be great. Yeah. All right, okay. I have to go to another meeting. Yes, and we uh, we actually all have to go, unfortunately. So, all for your time. Uh, we really appreciate everybody tuning in. This has been an awesome call, <clears throat> um, and I will uh, uh, try and do as well as I did last time and get this this call up here uh, this week. So. Um, the YouTube video and notes, notes all wrapped up. So thank you guys so much and have a great rest of your month. See you guys. Bye.